In December 2019, a mysterious illness similar to pneumonia and connected to the Hunan Seafood Wholesale Market began to spread in Wuhan, China. On January 7, 2020, Chinese authorities identified the illness to be a new type of coronavirus, now known as COVID-19. After spreading to nearby countries at an alarming rate, WHO, also known as the World Health Organization, declared the new deadly virus to be a global public health emergency. In less than three months, the first confirmed case of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China, had spiraled into a global pandemic. Executive members of the U.S. government felt the virus would not have a significant impact on citizens of the United States. Some elected officials, including President Trump, even referred to COVID-19 as a hoax. This is their new hoax. But you know, we did something that's been pretty amazing. We are 15 people in this massive country. And because of the fact that we went early, we went early, we could have had a lot more than that. So far, we have lost nobody to coronavirus in the United States. The first confirmed case of COVID-19 was reported in Snohomish County, Washington on January 20th. February 19th, the first death as a result of COVID-19 was reported. Mirroring the sentiments of President Trump, many American citizens downplayed the potential impact of the virus. But we're gonna make the best of it. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna- By March 11th, who had declared COVID-19 a global pandemic? President Trump had banned all travel from 26 European countries. To keep the infection and those carrying the infection from entering our country, we have no choice. Whether it's the virus that we're talking about. And there were more than 1,300 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the United States with an estimated 38 deaths. Three days later, the number of confirmed U.S. cases jumped to 2,183, and President Trump finally declared a national emergency. While some remain cavalier about COVID-19's emerging presence in the United States, trends of panic shopping and local government officials ordering the closures of public spaces began to sweep communities. Services, including police, fire and sanitation are fully operational at this time, although city buildings are closed to the public for now. On the business side of things, some major businesses and corporations began to establish work from home plans, while others began to cut hours and lay off employees in droves. Meanwhile, individuals who were designated essential employees were left on the front lines to continue working and providing services. Marcy is a full-time employee at a grocery store, currently one of the locations most at risk for contamination. I believe it was four weeks before quarantine started. Work got crazy. Um, people, School was starting to um, be dismissed and uh, people were going crazy because they um, thought that with the kids being home that they would go through 400 times more groceries than they do like in the summertime. We have markers on the floor for people to stand six feet apart. And I would say that 90% of the people adhere to it because they actually look down at their feet. And then you have the 10% that get evil about it and either don't understand the social distancing or they choose to be uh, ignorant about it. Latila Burns is a licensed professional counselor. We don't have N95 masks for everybody. You know, we got gloves, we have basic like surgical masks, but those are limited too. So when it boiled down to it, my thought was, well, if we really were dealing with somebody that was positive for COVID-19, we don't have protective gear to protect ourselves from. Latila shared how COVID-19 is affecting daily procedures for healthcare professionals and the importance of maintaining positive mental health during this time. Let's talk to people on the phone, stay connected, because to me that's the most important part, even though we're not having access to things like we usually do, doesn't mean we have to cut ourselves off and just lock ourselves up in our house.
you know, use the technology that you have, pick up the phone, check on your senior citizens, because I feel like I've had a lot of clients that, you know, they were having issues being alone and being lonely anyway. And now even the few outlets that they have had, that's been taken away and it's affecting them. So, you know, check on your neighbors, check on your people. Guidelines and statistics are changing every day. By the time you watch this video, many of these numbers will likely have increased and will continue to increase until better efforts are put in place to flatten the curve.